What's up Cybonics and welcome back to a new tutorial about handling images with Ionic and Capacitor. In the past this was a big guide, the Ionic image guide uh, on Cordova, but actually a lot of change with Capacitor and I noticed that we haven't done this before. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to use the Capacitor camera and the Capacitor file system plugin to build a little Ionic application where we can capture images, we can store them inside the file system, we can delete them, and in the end we will also upload them to a little PHP script that I've created. Uh, you can find it in the link below. We won't cover that PHP part, it's just to show you how it could work. And of course this is not just uh, meant for uh, Ionic and PHP, it is just an upload of a blob file. So you could have a Node.js, Java, uh, Java uh, API, it really doesn't matter. It's just about handling files, storing files and uploading them uh, and everything combined with Capacitor. If you enjoy Ionic tutorials like this one, make sure to check out my ionicacademy.com, the place to learn everything Ionic, not just file upload, really everything else, including a community, courses, quick wins, templates, everything to make progress with Ionic faster. But now let's dive into our video and create a cool little application with Ionic and Capacitor to capture, upload, store and delete image files. All right, so let's get started with today's application. Of course, we're gonna start with a blank new Ionic application with Capacitor enabled. And the first thing that you should do is install the Capacitor camera and the Capacitor file system. Those are basically the two essential plugins that we need for our application. Now, if you also wanna test the behavior on your browser directly here, I recommend to install the Progressive Web App Elements package as well, as that will allow you to bring up a little camera preview inside the browser. And once you're done with this, you should run the first Ionic build and then add the native platforms, because we need a bit of uh, additional setup. Let's quickly go through that. Uh, for the setup of the Progressive Web App Elements, you need to open the main TS file and import this little statement and then execute it right here at the end. So those two lines go to the main TS. Then we need a few permissions. For Android, um, you can find the Android manifest inside somewhere, app source, main, Android, whatever. And usually you should already have the internet permission and the two uh, additional ones that we're gonna need are these two. So add them, otherwise you will have some problems on Android. For iOS, we also need some permissions and those go into the info plist. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter if you open this with Xcode or within your usual IDE. Just scroll to the bottom and then at some point after the last statement here, you can add those three elements. NS camera usage description, photo library at usage description and NS photo library usage description. Uh, use a reasonable text for them if you plan to release your app at some point because otherwise Apple will punish you. Uh, basically by not allowing your application. So make sure those are in place, otherwise I think even testing the application will crash if you don't have the right permissions. Great, once we got that we can continue with the app module because we're gonna make HTTP request to a little super simple backend, which is just one script. But anyway, we need the HTTP client module, so that goes to our import. Since we're using a capacitor now, we don't really have any other imports and the rest of this tutorial will completely focus on the homepage, TypeScript and HTML file. Before we do that, let me quickly show you what I created as well. Actually, I haven't created this, I just copied it from my last tutorial where we used Cordova. Uh, I used a local MEMP server on uh, my Mac for Windows, I, call, I think it's called XAMPP or something else, I don't know. If you're working with PHP, you definitely got this. But of course, this method is not just meant for PHP, I just wanted to give you an example with PHP because that was very popular in the past and a lot of people asked about this. So. Um, there's a little upload script that will um, accept a file somehow and does something and <laughs> store it. Um, and within that folder there's also an uploads folder and an index.php which reads the directory and prints out 
uh, all the cool files that we already added. So I'm gonna try and bring up the preview. Let's see, there we go. Uh, I already uploaded two images. Here's just the image with a name and another image of myself. Um, and we're gonna try and bring more images into this from our Ionic application. Again, first of all, you can find the code for everything, including the PHP stuff in the link tutorial below this video. And second, this is not only meant for PHP, it's just that um, this was pretty easy to set up. Uh, we're basically sending form data with blob information to a backend, and that could be Node.js, could be Java, could be basically anything. Okay, with that being said, uh, we can actually close this or remove, uh, well, we will work with that later. For now, let's get back, in, not here. <laughs> let's get back to this one. Um, what I did so far is not really a lot. Um, where's my application running? There it is, there we go. Um, so I just changed a little header color. I'll show you this in a second, uh, but otherwise there's really nothing going on so far. Um, I have to find a little interface. We will see that this comes in handy, not uh, super important, but helps to uh, see how the data in our application is uh, passed to other functions. And then we've defined a little uh, const for the directory where our images will be stored. Now, that's everything for the beginning. Uh, in the written version, I actually start with loading the files, um, but since we don't really have any file, I think it makes sense to just directly start with selecting an image. So therefore, let's add the import for the capacitor camera with all the beautiful interfaces that we need. And uh, we're using capacitor three in this video, by the way. And then we can start with the function to select an image. We're gonna somehow trigger this from our view. And the first thing is to just use the camera API and call get photo. We can pass in a lot of options like quality. Uh, maybe I'm gonna, uh, I don't care. Um, I'm, you can pass in allow editing. I will set this to true because I really don't like that behavior on Android. Um, more important is the result type. And we're gonna use the camera result type URI. Um, could we use base64 as well? Um, probably, yeah. Um, maybe it would even be better. I'm just thinking about how we're gonna store this. Um, but usually I prefer URI uh, because of the usual performance and well, it might not be the best. Uh, let's talk about this in the end again. Uh, perhaps that's a little challenge for you uh, to convert this later to just base64 and I guess you will comment with well I could remove about 50% of your course uh, your code Simon anyhow um, let's set for the source something you want you can use a prompt photos camera uh, I will just go with photos because then in my web preview it's hopefully not crashing uh, my recording otherwise after opening the camera for the first time uh, my image at the bottom might look horrible. Now, if we get back an image at this point, uh, we're gonna put in a little lock so we can see the image information. In that case, we wanna save our image. And we know that this is a photo. Uh, we can actually use the capacitor interface for that uh, pretty nicely. Now, to save the image, um, we're gonna, uh, yeah. Well, we really, we might have done this with just um, with just base64 data, but I don't wanna break things now. So we will stick to this. I'm pretty sure it will be useful for you anyway. Um, so let's do this. If we wanna save an image with Capacitor, we of course need to uh, give the file a name. I would recommend you just make uh, something like this uh, with a date or whatever you like. And then we can go ahead with saving the file using the file system, auto import coming from capacitor file system, and then using write file. Now we need to put in some options and this is important. So first of all, we're gonna have to use a directory. I recommend you always use the uh, same directory, otherwise uh, it will be <laughs> very challenging for you in the end. 
You can select from cache data documents, uh, external, external storage. Um, data is usually meant for user generated uh, IELTS will use document on Android. It's a directory holding application files. Files will be deleted when the application is uninstalled. And I think that's fine and a good directory. Um, the path within that directory should be now our defined string. So we got just gonna put in, well, not exactly. Uh, we need to construct this because we don't only wanna uh, supply the name of the folder, but also the file name. So we're gonna do it like this and there we go. Yeah, of course I got one too much. And finally, we need the data. Now, this one's a bit more challenging because um, writing to the file system, uh, write file options, data has to be a string. So we can't put in Yuri or a blob or anything like that. We now have to convert the photo that we captured to a base64 string. And yes, I see the point we could just use base64 in here, but I always had some problems with the performance at that point, but well, yeah, I really see it. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how to do it like this. Maybe it's even the safer way to do it like this. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the base64 uh, data by using another function. Can just already put it in here and do it like that. And that one will be called read as base64 from a photo. Now, this function I didn't came up with. Um, well, I used it from a great tutorial by, I think uh, Matt Netka created this specific tutorial. Um, and within here is somewhere a function that looks like this. But in fact, this is only the version that works on the web. So we're gonna have to go adding mobile and then instead use this one. Why did I actually uh, create the function? Well, because I renamed it. That's a good point. Um, so we're gonna use my own interface here. Okay, uh, we can remove some comments but we see that we now need the platform to make a little platform check because uh, the behavior is a bit different on um, uh, the web and on native devices. So if we're running the application in the context hybrid, which means it's a native iOS or Android application, we can just read from the file system the f uh, using the photo path. That is a URI. Uh, because we use camera result type URI, and then we can just return the file data. In the case of a web implementation, we actually have a web path to that file. And now it gets interesting because with a web path, we can now convert that blob, uh, which we just use, uh, get from the fetch API to a base64 string. Once again, yeah, we're doing a lot with that blob, which we could have saved by using a base64 string. Uh, anyway, now we got this in place. Those basically belong uh, to each other since this is just the helper function used here, which uh, has a little file reader and handles this nicely as a promise. All right, that means we get the base64 data uh, by calling this dot read as base64 and we will get it in both cases, web and native application. Uh, we can lock out that data just for fun and at some point we will have our saved file, saved file. And with that in place, I think we are ready for a little first test run. We only need to implement uh, uh, one part of the view. Let's put in an ion footer, toolbar, ion button, clear, full, whatever, which calls our select image functionality. Okay, we got that. Uh, did I use the photos? <laughs> I really don't wanna mess up my recording, please. Okay, we're gonna use this cool stencil image and then we get. First of all, that's the image information on the web. We have format PNG and the web path. Now, this is the base64 data that we get back after our transformation. And then we have written the file to some place. And we can do this with another file. Let's do this one as well. 
uh, interesting. And that file is saved as well. Pretty cool, but we don't really see our files. Now it's time to actually load them. Um, for this, we're gonna add an array images, which will have the type local file array. And it's gonna be an empty array in the beginning. Then we're gonna add a function to actually load the files. Um, and we're gonna call this in here, load files. And because I'm a bit lazy, I'm gonna just call this function whenever we make any changes. So for example, after we've saved the file, I'm gonna add this as well. Uh, to make this as well more performant, I would recommend to uh, manually perform the actions that you will see in the next step uh, on this new image and then just add it to your local array instead of uh, reloading everything, which will make a little, uh, well, cause the view to reload everything. But for today, we wanna keep it simple. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can improve this. Therefore, I'm always gonna set the images array back to an empty array here, and that's what's causing the flicker. And then we're gonna add a bit of loading. So let's add a loading controller. So we all see that something is actually going on within our function. We're loading the data in the beginning. Now it's time to once again ask the file system. In the past, um, I've also shown you how to do this with Ionic storage. And that works as well. So we could uh, store uh, the file just like we did and then also keep track of the entries within Ionic storage and perhaps enrich that with more data, title, description, whatever you might have to store. And that would just work fine. But in this case, we can also just do it directly with a file system. So you can call read directory. And we already know that the directory should be directory.data. And the path to the folder that we actually want to use is the constant that we defined uh, at the beginning. Now, um, in case we get a result, that's cool. Um, but there's also the case that we encounter an error. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna encounter the error here. Uh, most likely not because I already tried this before. But if you run the code for the first time, there is no image directory and you will run into this block. Uh, and that means at this point, we should create the directory first of all. Uh, no, of course it's, yeah. Create directory, make directory, whatever. Um, the information is still the same. We wanna do it inside the data directory. The path is still this one and we don't really care about the result uh, because that will just make an empty directory and we don't really have any images at that point anyway. Um, just finally cleaning up after ourselves. So loading dismiss. And the more interesting uh, part is now here. Uh, I really love my poor man's logging. Um, this should already read our directory. Oh, I actually got already three files. Interesting. That was maybe from before. Mm. Well, for debugging, let's do the fun and remove that application. Uh, I always forget where it is. I think it's in, nope. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, what are we using actually? It's an index DB, right? Index DB, the file storage. Let's clear the file storage and hit reload. And then we see error folder does not exist, but we should have triggered that function. So if I perform another reload, we don't get into that error and we get an empty array back. Cool. Okay, we've solved the first issue. Now, once we got the result, uh, let's do this again, <laughs> um, because I actually wanted to have those files. Uh, we get back this information. That's a great information to display an image if that would be a local asset, but it is not. And that means we somehow need to resolve that information to the real file and then also somehow display that file. So now we can continue within this block uh, where we are and add a new function to load the file data based on an array of strings which are just plain file names. 
So let's do this, load file data with result.files. And within that function, we can now iterate all of them, first of all. So let file of file names. And remember, this is just a name. This is just 16-whatever.jpg. Uh, and we first of all create the real file path based on that information by using, once again, image directory slash the name. So that should give us something that looks like stored images slash 123.jpg. And now we can finally read that file by once again, guess what, using the capacitor file system. Really, I really, the file system is one of these plugins that it basically just works. I really like to work with it. It was such a pain with Cordova in the past and I feel like capacitor file system is really working a lot better. It's just, just my opinion, but of course, um, well, whatever. Okay, we're gonna use our same directory like before and we've already created the file path, so we should be good. And let's lock this out, red, read file, red file, hmm. anyway, okay, and there we go. We get back the information. So this is now the base64 information that we really read from the file inside the file system. And uh, that is pretty good because now we can just push that information to our images. Uh, we call push and we create a little object because uh, we uh, gave this the uh, interface local file. So we're gonna have to use the name. We're just gonna use the name which we already got back after reading the directory. We use the path, which is the file path, just because then we got the information available once we wanna upload and delete the information. And finally, the data, which we now make a legit base64 image by adding this in front of the actual data from the file. And so now, after loading, <clears throat> Uh, loading or reading the directory, we have loaded or loaded all the files and we got all of them inside our images array. And we can now uh, just print them out somehow. Um, let me bring in the content because that's really not the focus of this video. If we don't have any images, I'm just gonna display a little uh, warning. And otherwise, we're gonna iterate through all the files and we don't need the index. We have a thumbnail, which is now using file data. <clears throat> we have a label, which is using file name. And then we got two more functions, start upload and delete image, which will be the focus for uh, the rest of the tutorial. But for now, let's see if we were able to make it work up until here. And there we go, we got our first image. Let's take another one. Uh, that was, uh, okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, file, cool lock, and the file is displayed. And I can also refresh it because it's in the file system. And at the same time now, I could do this on my device. Um, for my device, I'm gonna have to, yeah, start the screen mirroring. I will somehow do this in the background. And as well, um, I'm just gonna use, oh, so much code. I'm just gonna use the camera in here instead for the device. So you get like picture in, in picture and something. As you can see, I already added a few files in here. Let's try to add another image. Uh, yeah, please do this. Hello, little friendo, use photo. And then we see the photo appears up here. So it works on my iOS device as well. And I've also tested this with Android. So please don't say Android is not working. Well, my device was pretty old. <laughs> so maybe there's a little difference to your device, but usually it should work the same. Um, where did we left off? I think the only thing that's missing, yeah, is start upload and deleting files. Maybe we're gonna do the deletion first because that's pretty easy. 
so we call this with a local file. So now you see why I created that interface. We can also put it into start upload, which makes life pretty easy. And to delete this file, we're gonna have to mark it at async, oh, uh, uh, asynchronous. And, and we're gonna go ahead with the elite file. Another cool function of the file system, directory, really I need a shortcut for that, directory.data and finally path, file.path. Good thing we stored it inside our interface. And uh, because we're lazy, we're just gonna call load files again. We could also add a little toast message, but uh, I don't feel like adding it now. Start upload is more interesting, at least a, a tiny bit. Um, because we want to uh, append the data as form data. And right now it's base64. Perhaps your API is also accepting base64, so you can just send it over as a string in the body. Might work as well, but in a lot of cases you directly upload the blob information. And in that case, let's start this by, first of all, using the fetch API again. Uh, because our file data is actually uh, already a base64 string, we can use fetch directly. Uh, we're gonna see how this looks. What was the command? Oh, nice, I got that. I still got it. Uh, so let's see how that looks. And press upload. Okay, that's the response. Uh, that's the URL and that's the body, a readable stream. That looks great because from that we are able to create a blob by just using await response to blob. And then we can put in another of these. Oh, I found it again. I'm so happy. I completely forgot about that command. There we go. And then we have a blob. The size looks good and it's ready to be sent to our API. I'm gonna remove the images here for now um, because then we can actually see the difference. Let me quickly delete those. Uh, no, I'm not answering the door right now. Thank you. Okay, no more images. That's good. Um, we can get rid of this and get rid of that and create a little form data object. New form data, actually not sure if you could pass it into the constructor already. I usually use it like this, form data append. The key, um, this is now file in my case because the backend expects it to be file. That might be different for you if you have your own API running. Then we got the blob information and then you also pass in the file.name uh, and then we got the form data ready. And now we can uh, finally upload it. And I've created another function because functions all the time today. Okay, we're gonna pass the form data to it. So every function is really just doing one little thing in this example. So hopefully this will be helpful for you. Um, we are gonna do it like this. I'm gonna show a little loading while we're uploading. And then I'm gonna use my local um, URL. If you're using the script from the tutorial below this video, you can do it mostly like this. I've just created an images folder inside my MEMP installation and within there is the upload, the index and the additional uploads folder. Um, if you wanna test this out from your, let's say simulator or your device, you should in this case here use the IP of your computer instead or just here. So whatever, something like this should be your URL in that case. Uh, otherwise with localhost, it's not gonna work from the simulator or your connected device. And now the final part is really easy. We're using the HTTP client, which we might wanna add. Private HTTP, HTTP client, there we go. And we try to find our function and we make a post request to our URL with our form data. And then we can, um, well, we can add a little pipe block. So let's say uh, finalize, we're gonna uh, loading dismiss. 
Um, sorry about that. Um, I really don't care about the value. And then we can hit the subscribe block. And I'm just gonna put a lock in here um, because it should hopefully work. Okay, time for a real test, right? I'm gonna bring up this and I'm gonna bring up my image upload. Let's give it a try. Oh, that looks great as well. Upload this cool file, upload success, and there we go. And I can upload this one and it's immediately here and I could even upload it again and then it's not there because it's the same file name. <laughs> anyway, we can delete the files uh, that works as well. And as a final little uh, addition, where is my real app? There it is. So on a device, real life testing. Um, I'm gonna upload the one I just captured. And yeah, uh, of course I need to use the other URL. I've stored this somewhere so I could quickly do it because I knew that would happen. So I'm gonna replace this because I got live reload enabled, that should work pretty nice. Um, we're still at two files, let's upload that. And let's upload this one from Simon and well, that's enough. And there we go, image, more images and the image we just created. And I could now also connect the Android device. Well, is it already maybe turned on? Let's give this a try. Uh, I always forget about it could work. Let's quickly do this. Let's quickly try Android as well. So I can at least show you that it used to work on Android. Uh, I'm gonna select a photo of myself. Perfect, that should work. And then we are gonna hit the upload. And we're gonna hit the refresh. And please be here <laughs> is our glorious image of me in front of the green screen. Maybe I should have allowed editing. That looks horrible. Anyway, I think that's it. Uh, we got the upload, we got the delete. Uh, we got everything in place to manage files locally on the web and as well inside a native iOS and Android application. All right, and that's it for today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed this updated guide about handling images because I feel images are still one of the main elements that like 90% of applications uh, handle. Maybe it's a user avatar, maybe it's some kind of just sending images to another user. Really, there are a lot of reasons to use this and we've seen it works nice inside iOS, it works nice on Android at the same time and even on the web with the Capacitor implementation. So really a huge plus for Capacitor. If you enjoyed the video, also give it a like somewhere here below and subscribe to the channel for more Ionic videos and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon.